friends. Um, well, really, hey, grown-ups, how are you doing? All right, Miss Lisa here. We are talking a little bit about one of my favorite themes, space. Um, we're also talking about up and down and opposites. So the first thing I had an idea for for teaching preschool at home this week is working on your idea of opposites. Talking about up and down and then also going into a whole bunch of other opposites. You could do it with stuffed animals. Um, you can do it with your bodies, putting your arms up, putting your arms down. Um, you can also, one of the things we did this week was we made a little parachute man and we launched him off the second floor of our house <laughs> inside. Um, so you can, you could work on those skills. Um, we were also this week working on our recognizing, uh, simple letters and numbers. So for my kids, we, I wrote out a letter and you can see we got a little sticker happy here, but they were supposed to cover the letter or number that I wrote with stickers. If you have star stickers, they work beautifully for this, but somehow I had no star stickers in my whole art closet. So we used happy suns. I don't know, improvise with what you have. So um, you could do it with star stickers or you can do Q-tip painting where we're working with a Q-tip, dipping it into paint and then going along the whole shape. So you can do um, a letter that's important to them, a number that's important to them for their number recognition, or you can do a simple shape. That's all the stars I had. So she used them to fill in the star naturally. Um, another thing that you can do this week is that you could make a night sky also with those Q-tips that we were talking about. So while you have the Q-tips out, you know, two birds, one stone, uh, you can make what the night sky looks like and try to include some different ideas. Like um, mine had, this one drew a monkey exploring space. Sure, right? Um, but you notice the very neatly lined stars. I always enjoy seeing how differently kids interpret the same prompts and the same um, material, and they'll just do totally opposite things. So I always find that kind of entertaining. Um, so we made some space art. We did our sticker letters. Um, if you have an older kid, you can do their whole name and work on all of that instead of just one. And anytime they're peeling off stickers or using Q-tips, they are working on that pincer grip that I'm so obsessive about. So when we are peeling the stickers off of those sheets and trying to put them exactly where we want them, we are working on that pincer grip. When we are using our Q-tips, we're holding it. We don't do the whole fist around it. We're doing it just like this. And all of that builds our writing muscles so that later on when we start writing, we have those all ready to go. So that's our math, writing, um, letter recognition, all of that right there. We are also this week experimenting with whether things will sink or float. We've talked a lot about gravity. So you can talk about gravity and then put it out a little basin of water. This is a great outside activity because then you don't want to clean it all up. And then have them collect some things from around the house. You want to make a hypothesis, which means you are making a guess about what you think is going to happen. And then you're going to test your hypothesis, which means you're going to toss those things in some water and see if they sink all the way to the bottom or if they stay at the top and float up or down. Um, you can talk a little bit about how space does not have gravity. And part of the reason we have gravity is because we are attached to the earth and the earth produces our gravity. Um, another thing that you can do is a big moon jump where you can go outside or you can do it inside if it's rainy and see how far you can jump. You can measure it. Um, try using Duplos or something like that to see how far you went. Or if you are on top of it and you have a yardstick, use that. Um, so you could do the moon jump skills. Let's see and talk about how on the moon you can jump a little bit further because less gravity and then we were also talking about oh we made some paper airplanes this week and talked about believe it or not the principles of flight so we found this hilarious little book rocket science for babies um and my daughter loves it because it has a flying passy on the front but we talked about it talks about lift and thrust and why rockets are able to take off so we worked a little bit with that with our paper airplanes you can keep it really simple throw them again, see how far it goes, just like you did with your moon jump. Um, and then the last idea I had was that you can make your own solar system. There is a fly in here. That's distracting, isn't it? Um, so we did it a couple different ways. We made 
all eight planets and the sun and our, our moon with different medium. So we made a few that were tissue paper mosaics. I love using tissue paper mosaics because again, we're working on those fine motor skills. When we're ripping it up and when we're gluing it down, we are working on all of those muscles. So this is obviously our earth. Um, another way you can do is while you have those Q-tips out, save yourself a little bit of trouble and you can do some Q-tip painting with your planets so you can paint them with Q-tips. I love doing that style. Um, I did that one because I was having fun with it, but my kids also did some. Some kids will just do dots and some will do big long strings with it. Um, and then the last way that we made planets this week was, fine. they're still drying, so they're kind of wet, sorry. Um, but we did string art. I don't know if you've done any string art where you're painting with a string, but we put yarn into things of paint and you can do this with it and it makes one motion. So it will end up looking kind of like our Saturn did. Or if you drag it around, then it makes a whole different effect. And it looks a little bit more like, I think this one was our Neptune. I think that was Neptune. So there's lots of different things you can experiment with. I hope that gives you some easy ideas with things that you already have at home for preschool at home. We miss seeing you at the library and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye.